This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Shamrock Model 233S. It's a hybrid trailer with three bunks that fold to the outside, three beds, okay? So we're not going to go through the, the bed setup part or much of the outside. They've got excellent videos that will show you how to do that. Um, they've got links to them at the manufacturers and I think from the, from the manual actually too. So anyway, um, I'm just going to take you through the inside and show you some of the features and how they work, okay? But while we're out here, you have regular scissor type stabilizers. It takes a three quarter inch crank and or socket. Um, this is an LP quick disconnect here, or quick connect for that matter. The reason that's there is because you have a griddle that hangs right on here. And you have to plug that in. It comes with a rubber LP hose. And then of course there's another little table that comes next, sits next to it. Um, also while we're standing here, you got, you got TV signal out here um, and power and then of course you have a, uh, a um, TV bracket. The other half of the bracket is inside the trailer. I'll show you that when we get in there. Okay, you have a power awning with LED strip, uh, outside speaker, speakers. Um, now this, this device here is a uh, it's a vent for the range hood. So um, basically if you want to vent to the outside with the range hood, you have to push up on these two uh, little little latches there and it'll free up the baffle inside so the baffle flaps freely. So make sure when you're, when you're venting you want to have that flapping freely. Otherwise you can keep it shut when you're, to when you're uh, traveling or in storage or that sort of thing. Okay. Everything's frozen in case you haven't seen. We got a major ice storm, of course, and then a snowstorm to follow it. So this is your griddle here. This is the um, the the rain or the the uh, what am I looking for? The the utility table, okay. Um, and you have your cranks in there and, and all that sort of thing, okay. A lot of activity this morning. Okay, so. This is your water heater. You don't have to, uh, you operate it basically from the inside of the trailer. There is a, uh, an anode rod that's also a drain plug that you can take in and out to uh, drain it. Keep in mind that that's an inch and a sixteenth, six point socket, so you have to have one of those. About a six inch extension and then a bar or a ratchet to break it free. Okay. Never run the water heater without water in it. Uh, this is just a hookup for a, for a solar battery charger. If you want to get one, you plug into that and it'll charge your batteries. Of course, you have your front bed door. You have two deep cycle marine batteries. They're wired together at 12 volt, right? So it just puts out 12 volt, it just doubles your storage capacity. Two LP tanks, this is your power tongue jack. There's a small crank inside. If this was to fail, you can pull this plug off when it's not frozen. And you can put it on your crank it manually if you had to, but it's a power uh, with, a, with a hitch light. Here's another hitch light, of course. Okay. More storage. 30 foot, 30 amp power cord. We give you a reducer for it. This is the, the fresh water fill. If you, the most common way to get water is city water, right? But if you're, not, if you're at a campground that doesn't have plumbing, you could pre-fill this tank and uh, use the onboard pump to pump the water. So you, it'll, everything will work just as though you have um, city water, even though you're pumping from the tank. Okay, these are your, your dump valves here. Of course, black and, and gray. Gr black is toilet water waste. Gray is sink and shower water. You know, outside, um, outside shower slash sprayer. This here is where you would install your water filter if you chose to use one. Okay, right now that's uh, it's got antifreeze in it and uh, there's no water filter in there. This comes with a water filter so after you dewinterize it in the spring if you want to use it you put it in that. Okay, and this, this is a switch that selects between dr water drawing from the fresh water tank or you drawing antifreeze through this line here. You, know, you can look into that and educate yourself a bit if you don't know. But this type of trailer or this type of system you could actually draw it in from out here. You'd make up a hose. It has to be long enough to touch the ground. You put it into a gallon of antifreeze and just use the pump to pump it in. Okay. And this is your city water hookup. 
This is um, the most common way. I told you how to fill the tank. This is if you already got city water. Uh, this is a black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank, you can hook the hose at the dump station up to here, turn it on and spray, spray out your tank, clean it off, make sure the sensors are good and clean. Um, but remember, always open the, uh, open the black tank valve before you turn on the water so you don't damage anything with the pressure. All right, so let's go inside here. It is cold. Okay, here we go. All right, so let me look around here so you can see. Okay, so this is your panel, your control panel. You have lights here, right? You have your awning retract and extend. Never leave it out unattended, of course. You have your slide room extend and retract. You just hold the finger on the button until you hear the ratcheting noise, and that tells you it's it's all the way out. Um, to light your water heater on electric, you're going to do this. To light it on gas, you're going to do this. Um, never run it without water in it, of course. To use your water pump, you do that. That's used to pump water out of the tank. Like I stated, it's also used for winterizing. And of course, this is your are your tank heaters. It just extend your camping season by heating up your all your storage tanks uh, and uh, you know it has to get much much colder to freeze okay so these are your, just your levels batteries charged fresh water is empty black is water empty gray is empty as it get, after it gets past two-thirds they light up in one-third increments after it gets past two-thirds you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping the gray and black tank of course this also has an app this is what they're telling you here um, now this is a Wi-Fi Ranger. It's on right now. I just turned it on. Um, but basically, it's on the, the, the uh, it's on the roof, and what it does is it it uh, it boosts public Wi-Fi. It does not, It has another cellular feature, but that's a paid feature. The, the feature most people use, the free one, is a uh, <coughs> excuse me is a uh, is a uh, has to do with public Wi-Fi. So what you do is first of all, with all your you and your family's phones or tablets. Um, you would put in, you would look in your in your cellular, or excuse me, in your Wi-Fi section. I'm sorry, until uh, you see Tenton. It looks like 9085. So that's you. That's the name of the Wi-Fi Ranger. I know you can't see it very well with this uh, camera. It's also very high. Um, but so you would put a password in, so all, everybody's phones or tablets hook up to it automatically, right? Then, well, when you get to the campground, you will. Uh, type this address in a browser. This is the bottom line here. So you type the address into a browser, if you can. Okay. And um, this is the temporary password here. Uh, change me now, 9085. Okay. So uh, you log on to it, you'll be able to see everything the Wi-Fi Ranger sees and um, make up your own password, that sort of thing. So that's a really good thing to use. Um, it also has a cellular feature, but you have to talk to the Wi-Fi Ranger people. Plus, you go, I believe, through your cellular service, and you'd have to pay another fee, just like you would if you added a phone or a tablet. So, okay. So, <clears throat> let me look here. Microwave like, works like any other microwave. This is your range hood I told you about, opening the baffle outside, right? There's your fan, got your light. Um, the range top. Works like just about all of them work here. You have a sparker. So this, all the way to left here is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. Then of course you got three burners and three knobs. So you're just going to turn this on, spark it, and it lights. Okay? Um, so three burners, three knobs. Then when it comes to the, the oven knob, which is right here, all the way at the bottom here, all the way to the back, is a pilot light. I can spark it so you can probably see it there. Okay, so what you do is you go to the oven knob, you, you go to the picture of the pilot light, then you depress it. You keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure. Then you start sparking it with your left hand until you see it light down here. After it lights, you still hold this for another 10 seconds to heat it up. You go to operating temperature and it cycles like an oven does. When you shut it off, the, the uh, flame goes out obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Always keep this top closed when you're traveling. Okay, these are just 
pantry. Okay. All right, so your bunks are up obviously right now. This is your furnace. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not your furnace, but this is the thermostat. So right now it's an analog thermostat. You see we, they've got it up all the way because we just came out here this morning and we're heating it up. Um, right now it's on heat. Next would be off fan, which is the air conditioner running without the compressor. And then of course uh, cool, which is full air conditioning. Always try to keep the, the fan speed on auto uh, if you can. That's the best way to do it. Now this is your solar controller here. Let me see if I can get a better picture here. This is your solar controller. So what it is, first of all it tells you you've got a flooded battery. That's true. It's, it's one battery. Oh, there's two batteries wired together as one, of course. And it's putting out 13.4 volts. You just saw it there. Right now, when it comes to amp gain from the sun to the solar panel, you're only getting 0.1, but there's snow on the, on the roof right now, so that's why. Um, the next one, it's 100% charged, and you're getting 49 amp hours at this point, and then back to 13.1 volt output, which is just what you want. So, like I said, that one, the picture of the sun pointing towards the, the solar panel would be, is the gain from uh, your, your solar panel that's being stored in your electricity, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in your, in your uh, battery. I'm very, I'm still shaking here, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> um, so that, that's that. So that's just, that's just telling you what you're gaining. Um, you just push the B button over and over again. So, Also, you got a USB here. Let's say if you had an had emergency and you had no power, you could charge a phone there and use it if you needed to, things like that. So, Okay, and I believe, I believe there's a Bluetooth app for this too. I know there is. Yeah, right there, Bluetooth enabled. So if you wanted to add that app, app also, you can do it. Okay, first of all, I want to, or second of all, or third of all, wherever I'm at, I want to kind of apologize for the camera work because I know it's not good, it's too close, too jittery, but this is what I've got to work with right now, so I'll do the best I can. Okay, so in the bathroom here, um, works like a, a regular bathroom except, let me start here, and get that out of the way, hold oh, on, there we go, okay, so the thing different, the different thing about the shower is this right here. This is the, uh, a water miser, a shower miser. Um, it's made by these people here, Aquaview. Now, if, if you don't remember what I'm telling you or you don't understand what I'm saying, you can always go to their website and look at their, their videos and their material too. That's a good way to learn. So, okay, what this does is it's a water circulator. So normally when you heat up hot water to take a shower, it's gonna, it's gonna be going down the, coming out the shower head and going down the drain while it heats up, right? So you're wasting water, you know, if you're in an area with droughts, that's not advisable. So you're wasting water. Plus, you're wasting storage in your gray tank because all the water that is going down into the gray tank, that doesn't need to. Um, that's where this comes in. This, this circulates the water between the water pump and here, around and around and around. You put it in that position in order for that to happen, and it'll keep circulating. No water will come out the shower head, so you're not wasting any. Um, as it heats up, this will turn a, a sort of a beige color. The blue will turn to sort of a beige. Um, that's when you know it's hot, right? So now you got heat up water, you didn't waste any, and you go like this, and it, and it operates like a regular shower. So it's just a way to save water while the, the water's heating up to shower with, okay? All right. Um, another thing, of course, is the toilet. I don't know if you know RV toilets or not, but that's the flush pedal. And the thing to remember, as Andy Fries, is the black tank is directly below, right? That's uh, your your toilet storage tank um, and you can't use it dry so when you pull into the campground you hook up your power and your water you'll come in here you'll dump one dose of chemical right in the bowl whichever brand you use just read the directions then you'll stand on the pedal water will come swirling around and wash the chemical and wash water into the black tank you stand on it long enough to put a, at least a gallon in there there's no way to tell exactly what that is but you'll just get used to it um, some people use more, but the thing to remember is you have to have water and chemical in the black tank or it can get clogged up for one thing. The second of all, the smell will be, uh, will be overwhelming, so um, make sure you do that. Um, and of course the sink works like any other sink. So. The last thing is the fan up here. It's a four-speed fan. Always run it on low with the shower to pull the humidity out. And an uh, important thing to remember, this is very important, when um, you have another fan over here too, the same model. Um, when when you got people over, 
and it's the time of year where you're going to get condensation from the, their breath and everything. Um, if you run the fan on low, you won't be able to hear it, and it'll pull all the all the condensation right out of the trailer. So always keep that in mind. You want to utilize these fans to uh, if you got condensation building up on your the inside of your your tent canvas, for example, like like can happen under the exact right conditions. You just turn that on, and it'll take care of it. That's why they have two of them. Okay. So let me look around a little bit more here. Um, <clears throat> this is your. Okay. So now this 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 trailer does two different things with electricity. It inverts it. Inversion is taking 12 volt DC and converting it to 110 AC or 120 AC if you prefer. I'll just call it 110. Um, so, when you're inverting, you're taking 12 volts from the battery, you're turning it into AC power. Uh, the idea is only one plug in here is going to be inverted. It says right here, inverted circuit. So you know it's this one right here. So if you want to use a coffee pot that runs on 110 or a hair dryer that runs on 110, um, and you're not plugged into power, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can run it. But you can only one roll, roll, or run one appliance uh, at a time, but still. You're, you're getting the AC power from DC, which is, a, which is a great thing. So that's what that does, it inverts. The other thing this does is converts power. That's what happens here, this is the power converter. So um, basically when you're plugged in, this side is the, is the 110 AC side. It comes in, you've got, you got regular circuit breakers like you see at home, and they're all labeled, right? That's AC power. Then it converts it to 12 volt DC on this side. Um, you have uh, fuses here, 12 volt fuses, and you have, uh, they're all labeled, right? So uh, keep in mind these 240s are masters, and if, if, you, if you have a wild power surge or a lightning strike or something and you lose your 12 volt side, um, just look at these two here, because that's where the problem's gonna be. That's just them doing their job. So, okay, so the last, another thing this does is it, um, it will tend your batteries up front. It'll, it'll, as long as you're plugged in, it'll, it'll uh, determine how much energy they need and then send appropriately. If they're chopped, topped off, it'll just trickle a couple amps. If they're low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever they need. So, when you're plugged at the campground, let's say your 12 volt refrigerator, for example, runs off the batteries. It takes the power from the batteries, and then the batteries are recharged by this power converter, right? Um, when you're towing it down the road, for example, the uh, Your batteries are charged by your uh, your your tow vehicle's alternator. Now, one thing to to invert, you just go to this button right here. You push it, and there now you're inverting power. You don't invert power all the time. You just do it when you need it, right? So let's say you're not going to use it. You hold the button for a few seconds, and it'll go out. So that shuts it down. So you're only going to turn it on when you're when you need to invert power. Okay. All right. So this is a. Uh, this is the carbon monoxide, an LP gas detector right here. Should always be green. It detects carbon monoxide buildup, LP gas leak, that sort of thing. If it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off up front, figure out what's going on. Also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your batteries are low. I'll put it through the self-test here. LP is good. Carbon monoxide coming up. Yep, and low battery alert. and then back to green, okay? If it's not green, like I said, get it serviced. It's very important. Okay. I think I've just about covered it. This is a flip over bed. It, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's not just a jackknife. You actually, uh, it's actually a more, I don't want to say more bed-like, but this back piece flips right over out to here, so, okay? You can see it. I'm sorry about the camera work. Um, this obviously turns into a bed. But when you're traveling, you always want it down in the stowed position. Otherwise, it'll can bounce around and break something. You can see the, the table legs are hinged. And then this, this yellow doohickey here, this, the switch, that's what locks it into place when it's up. And then you'll push it to the right to collapse it down. Okay. And it can be also be used as a bed. Um, TV works like any other TV. The, um, your radio, you play discs here, CDs and DVDs. You, it has AM, FM radio, you have Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet. 
got USB here. It's got HDMI in if you need to go into the system with a, a game machine or something like that. Um, two, two zones, zone one and zone two. One is inside, two is outside. Um, everything you need to for, uh, for entertainment. So uh, um, basically it's, you know, you can, you can use it as a radio, you can use it as a video player, whatever you want to do, okay? All right, so this is uh, your TV. Now, it's on a bracket that folds out, it locks into place. Just make sure you lock it into place before you travel so it doesn't get broke or get wedged in the slide out or anything like that, okay? These are the two remotes. Okay, it's been kind of a choppy video here. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm stammering a bit more than usual. But we got through it, so let me just look around here. I think that does it, so. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Keep in mind what I said about, about going, using manufacturer's videos to understand things better, like the inverter system, for example, um, and the solar panel controller. The websites have excellent material on there if you want to, you know, you, you may know all this and more about it than I know even. I don't know that, but I have to sort of assume that you don't, just so I don't leave people who don't out. So, um, keep that in mind. Plus, you've got the apps. So, there's a lot you can do with it. So, Okay, so thanks for purchasing here at National RV Detroit. Uh, remember, you have to inspect the roof every 90 days. So, uh, the manuf manufacturer states 90 days. So, when you go up on the roof, be very careful. And uh, you're going to check the, the uh, sealant, the lap sealant for separation or cracking, any way water could get in. You just give it a visual inspection. Then you'll look at the, uh, the attachments on the roof, make sure the vent covers aren't damaged by low branches or road debris flying up there, that sort of thing. Just give it a good inspection every 90 days, and this thing will be bone dry 20 years from now. But trailers have to be inspected and maintained as, as needed. So. Um, Make sure you take care of that. I mean, if if you might you might go on the you might go up on the roof four times a year or three times a year for uh, for ten years and never have to seal it. You might have to reseal it in a year at a certain spot. You don't know because they're all handmade, so that's why you're inspecting it. Okay. All right, and also we're winterized right now. The water heater's in bypass mode, and there's antifreeze in the system. Okay. Thank you.